It is a uh, terrific Tuesday, a little more terrific than yesterday for the markets. Uh, Dow up about 300 as we speak, so we're slightly in recovery mode, but don't get uh, out there and strike up the band just yet okay. because uh, there could be more pain to pay as the fear, fright, and hysteria from the coronavirus continues. Uh, if you're fearful or frightened, don't be. Erin Elmore is here to join me. She's with me throughout the hour. And if you're fearful about corona, don't be, because we got Dr. Dean Hart with us. He's an expert in microbiology, published author, and the transmissions of viruses and diseases. So you had a very boring academic life. But now you're the man we need to know from. What is happening here? Well, when you have all those bacteria on your trip to soy agar plate, it's not that boring. They're your friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> so socialization is different for us. Now, we do have this bioethical dilemma. And what do we have? We got coronavirus where there is no vaccine. And there's no way science is going to come out with it within less than a year. It could take three or four years. Then you've got treatments. We don't have treatments for the severe high morbidity and mortality rate associated with it. We don't have that either. What we do have is public health and we're figuring out how many people are infected and getting all the numbers. I don't trust the Chinese data. No. They, they're hungry and they eat bats, but I just don't trust the data about the science. I do trust they are hungry and they eat bats, but, and, and I think it's from that. They eat a lot of wild animals and it transmits zoonotic diseases, oh. which is monkeys will do it, all sorts of animals do. Oh. So anyway, we need these numbers. You're really breaking it down to the most grotesque of form, but I guess we have to understand when you bring in like a microbiologist type guy, they know what's they happening. They know. So this is where they come from. We have no when treatments. Was the last time you were in I the, need one. Uh, I feel yeah, so when dirty. was the last time you were in the studio, where you were in the lab? Because I don't know what kind of microbiologies are in your lab, but you know, I just want to make sure you didn't bring anything. Well, no virus. You. No yeah. virus. Okay. Can we play a little, a little game, like fact or fiction? Yes. So what do you think? Fact or fiction that this whole thing could have started in a lab in China near that market? They're saying that there was this lab in China. They're doing all this research on HIV and all of these viruses. And then it sort of somehow snuck out. Fact or fiction? Well, absolutely no proof for that. But could be true. weirder things in plausible society is the question. Is it plausible? I've seen some strange things in my so day, some, but I wouldn't count on it. It's so a zoonotic disease Some kid probably. who's working at the Wuhan University, who's in cahoots with Harvard University, by the way, on some special program, walks out for lunch and goes over to the local meat store and he buys a bat and eats the bat for lunch. Oh then he goes back into his job in the Wuhan and he's got something and he starts sniffling on everybody. That could be, that could be the start of the whole thing, right? It's not the cook bat that will get you. It's the preparing of the bat is where the virus will come oh. off you. These viruses are very delicate. Lysol wipes that you have there or Clorox. These things are very good. Washing your hands is very effective to get rid of the coronavirus. What we need is the numbers. We need to know it's, 50, it's highly contagious, clearly. It's, it's much more morbidity or mortality, it would seem, than the flu. Maybe four times as more. Not as high as like SARS and MERS and these other things. That's true, but we okay. those in, never be, became a pandemic, and we have the potential here for a pandemic. SARS and MERS is contained, and Ebola is contained, and the polio is more analogous. Everything ultimately gets contained. Well, we need to. The government needs to step up now. Uh, me, I'm a libertarian, but when you need the government to contract with society to come up and figure out who has it, test everybody like crazy, and get up the demographic information that should we be in groups, should we be in uh, subways, or should we take school at home? See, humans hate uncertainty, and we're filled with uncertainty right now. I think that stock market you were talking to, that don't like uncertainty That's either. That's uncertainty. I want to ask you something. Um, I've had some animal rights folks on the show, and they're all against, like, animal testing and all this other stuff. Mm. But it turns out, I'm doing a little homework when I can, there's three strains that are corona, this is a new novel strain, but we've known about coronavirus for quite some time. Yeah. And apparently by testing on animals, Merck has come up with this new, has, has a vaccine 
for coronavirus. We have that, the Merck uh, vaccine, uh, vaccine. Look at that. This is a good friend of mine who's in the dog-loving community. Mm. This is a canine coronavirus vaccine. So you, we, can, we can cure animals. This is, is how we any, get vaccines. Is there a, right, but is there any way we could take the dog and the bovine for, for dogs and cows and give it to humans? With proper testing. The problem is this is a bioethical issue. If you do untested vaccines, unproperly tested, you could do so much harm than good. So we but could use yes. it on men. Because most women would suggest all men are dogs, so that we can get away with that vaccine. <laughs> Maybe at we're least closer, on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we would never suggest women were bovine. You know what I'm saying? So but we can't. That would it. not be in your best interest if you <laughs> shall like to get a third wife. Actually, in this world, you test it in the she third wanted. world countries in Africa. That's what we do. Also, a bioethical issue. Dilemma, yes. But that's common practice, and it goes on. Can I ask you two more annoying questions? Um, is it true that this is not impacting children really under the age of nine? Well, they'll get it and they'll be transmitters, but they may not get the disease at all, or they may not get bad disease. Very few die when you're under 10 years old, basically. And numbers, and you figure out what, should we isolate the children or are they not carriers either? Are they carriers? We don't know yet, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And most of the fatalities are, for example, I read somewhere that the fatalities in Italy, the average age was 81. Well, with That's young flu. for Italy. Yeah. You know, these guys live till 105 drinking wine and smoking cigars. Then I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, the Mediterranean diet. But it, 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 the thing is, there's one group, immunocompromised, yes. elderly, those sick people will be most susceptible to the flu, to every germ there is. But we're having a chunk of people that are average age without the risk factors, more than the flu, proportionally dying, it would seem. But again, we need the certainty need of testing. the testing is the only answer that it's modern science. And it's a great answer. It's amazing we can test for a virus the size just a little bigger than the wavelength of light. We can wow. test for that. That's impressive. It's like a tachyon. What's a tachyon? I think that's it's smaller. It's a measure of speed, man. Ooh. A tachyon's smaller. Somebody's that's Jeopardy that's smart over here. Uh, uh, Dr. Dean Hart, I want to thank you very much. I have been subscribing to this. A Corona beer a day keeps the doctor away. And I'm using these Lysol wipes to take off my makeup at the end of the show. I'm wiping every, everything down. I'm 100% corona free. And I don't know if you know, but today is Purim, where we celebrate, you know, with uh, a feast and sometimes a cocktail. Thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. Your insights are right on the money. Thank you for joining us through uh, this crazy hour. And uh, Dr. Dean Hart is one of the best in the business. Thanks, buddy. Remember, cool and clean. We got to be calm, cool, and clean. That's it. The three C's. Calm, cool, and clean. Stay right there, stay calm, stay cool, and stay clean. We'll be back right after this with Black by Popular Demand. My friend, Mercavius Roberts is going to be here in just a minute. <laughs>